We will now highlight the assembly of a Unicam connector on a 900 micron loosely buffered fiber, or commonly referred to as a furcated 250 micron fiber. We will demonstrate the assembly using the Elite Toolkit. Complete assembly, including fiber preparation, takes less than two minutes. Prepare the installation tool for use by flipping the crimp handle up into the open position and moving the wrench handle to the upright or vertical position. When using the continuity test set, ensure that the connector carriage is oriented with the wide opening facing the wrench handle. Take the Unicam connector package and inspect it to ensure that the connector fiber type matches the fiber type of the cable to be terminated. Due to the fiber stub within the Unicam connector, this must match in order to get the desired results. Flip the connector package over, noting that the fiber preparation instructions are incorporated on the package. To remove the connector from the package, grasp the perforated edge and pull. This will prevent damage to the instructions. After taking the Unicam connector from the package, remove and discard the rubber cap from the rear of the connector. Examine the connector to make sure it is in the open or uncammed position. On the Unicam SC connectors, the cam is in the open position when the rib on the cam is oriented 90 degrees from the date code on the connector. The connector will not fit into the tool unless it is in the uncammed position. When terminating a Unicam connector with the CTS kit, it is necessary to set up the Visual Fault Locator, or VFL, jumper, and CTS adapter. Connect the supplied VFL in the tool kit to the ST-compatible side of the supplied SC-to-ST-compatible jumper. Guide the other side of the jumper through the crimp handle and securely insert the SC connector into the side of the supplied SC-CTS adapter labeled VFL. Turn the VFL on and you should notice a red light emitting from the jumper. If you do not see this, ensure that the VFL is working properly by referring to the VFL standard recommended procedure in the tool kit. The ferrule dust cap of the connector should be removed when terminating using the continuity test set. Fully seat the white Unicam SC connector body into the SC CTS adapter with the printed date code pointing up. Be advised that the connector will not latch. Ensure that the connector carriage is oriented with the wide opening facing the wrench handle. Then pull the winged slide of the Unicam connector tool back to the end of its travel and insert the lead-in tube of the Unicam SC connector into the wrench area of the tool. There may be some resistance at this point. Some minor adjustments of the connector body should allow the connector to slide into place. Note, the lead-in tube should rest on the crimp platform as shown when the connector is fully inserted into the tool. Slowly allow the winged slide to retract toward the wrench handle and engage the CTS adapter. Do not attempt to force the connector into the tool. If it does not slide into the tool easily, check to make sure the wrench handle is up. The cam is in the open position and the connector is oriented properly. Verify that the cam of the connector is still illuminated as this will be used for comparison later. Feed the 250 micron coated fiber through the fan out tubing until 44 millimeters of fiber protrudes from the end of the tubing or trim back enough tubing to allow 44 millimeters of 250 micron fiber to protrude from the fan out tubing. Slide the 900 micron boot, small end first, down the fiber and out of the way. Using the supplied fiber stripping card or connector bag, measure and mark the 250 micron coated fiber four millimeters from the end of the fan out tube. It is important to leave four millimeters of the 250 micron coated fiber extending beyond the 900 micron tubing. This allows the fibers to touch before the 900 micron tubing bottoms out inside the connector. Remove the 250 micron fiber coating up to the four millimeter mark with the fiber stripping tool. Limit the number of passes with the stripping tool to one pass when stripping the 250 micron coating. Additional passes on the glass can cause excess abrasion of the fiber surface, which could weaken the glass. Mark the 900 micron fan out tubing 10 millimeters back from the end. This mark is a visual aid to indicate when the field fiber contacts the fiber stub. This will serve as a reference to ensure the fibers are touching inside the connector. Clean the bare fiber with two passes of an alcohol wipe. Be careful not to touch the fiber after cleaning it. Now we are ready to load the fiber into the handler for cleaving.
Take the supplied single fiber handler from the tool kit and load the fiber into the handler by aligning the end of the 900 micron fan out tubing with the front edge of the handler. The 250 micron coated fiber will protrude from the handler. Then close the handler door and place the handler into the supplied FBC012 cleaver. The correct placement of the handler into the cleaving tool is critical. This will determine the cleave length of the field fiber. Cleave length is critical to proper assembly of the Unicam connector. Fibers which are too short will not terminate properly, and fibers which are too long will not allow the proper amount of strain relief. Be sure to place the handler into the cleaver so that the end of the 250 micron fiber coating aligns with the edge of the left-hand elastomeric pad. The coating should lightly contact but not overlap the pad's edge. Once the fiber is aligned properly into the cleaver, slowly bring the cleaver handle down as far as it will go and release. A nice smooth slow cleave will aid in producing excellent end face angles. Remove the scrapped fiber and discard properly. Carefully remove the handler from the cleaver. Remove the fiber from the handler and place the 900 micron tubing into the Unicam Connector Tools fiber index by depressing the release button. Make sure the fiber is fully seated between the rollers before releasing the button. While pulling the fiber through the rollers, carefully insert the cleaved fiber into the lead-in tube of the connector. Try to prevent the tip of the field fiber from touching any of the hardware on the assembly tool or the lead-in tube. It is very easy to damage the field fiber end face. When inserting the fiber into the lead-in tube of the connector, do not force the fiber forward if you feel resistance. This will break the field fiber, causing the connector to fail. If you feel resistance, back up and try again. When the fiber is fully seated, the buffer mark is within 2 millimeters of the back of the lead-in tube. You should be able to feel the firm contact of the fibers touching. Once the fibers touch, do not reseat the fiber against the stub. This may cause attenuation increases. Then give the rollers a quarter turn to put a small bow in the field fiber. This bow is important in helping to keep the field fiber and the fiber stub touching. Rotate the wrench past 90 degrees to cam the connector. Inspect the area where the red light near the cam was observed earlier. The light should noticeably dim but may not go out completely. If the light does not noticeably dim, then uncam the connector and pull the fiber back a couple of millimeters. Roll it in your fingers, then reseat the fiber. At this point, recam the connector. If the red light still does not noticeably dim, then uncam the connector and pull the field fiber out, re-cleave it, and try again. Carefully flip the crimp handle 180 degrees until it contacts the crimp tube. Push down firmly on the crimp handle to secure the 900 micron tubing. Do not be concerned with over crimping here. There is a positive stop on the crimp handle that will prevent the possibility of over crimping the lead-in tube. Flip the crimp handle open. A flat impression should be visible on the crimp tube. It is important that the connector is properly crimped to ensure that the specified amount of strain relief is achieved. To remove the connector from the installation tool, depress the release button on the fiber index and remove the fiber from the rollers. Then pull back on the slider to release the connector and pull it straight up and out of the tool. Use care not to pull on the fiber. Be sure to disconnect the Unicam connector from the CTS adapter. Replace the dust cap. Slide the boot into place over the connector by grasping the connector assembly and pushing the boot forward. Note, it is important that the boot be on the connector before continuing. Locate the outer blue housing, also known as the shroud. Insert the white connector body into the blue shroud in the orientation shown. The key of the shroud should be aligned with the date code on the connector body. Grasp the boot of the connector and snap the shroud into place. It does take some force to lock this into place. It is recommended to clean the connector end face aggressively with the alcohol pad prior to installation into the patch panel. This concludes this section.